We are one of nine um, high schools in Western Washington still to be trying to have a track and field season and a track and field program on dirt. And you can also see it's actually kind of gravel. Um, gravel and sand, even some old Mount St. Helens ashes on there from those days. Our biggest disadvantage is the track itself and just how terrible shape it is with the rocks and the holes in it and not being able to know where lines are at, where to set yourself or even like just having that feeling of being on a normal track and knowing what to experience. I had a long span, long weeks of constant shin splints from how hard the gravel was and how hard the dirt was. I had to wear two ankle braces, one on each foot. Running on the long jump platform is really tough. There's actually dips in the pit and dips in the runway where I have rolled my ankle multiple times. It's caused many people severe injuries. When you're doing block starts, you have to worry about it going backwards because of how wet it gets and slippery. So you have to have someone hold it for you. I run the hurdle races and every single day coming out to practice, it is really hard. You have to draw a line in the dirt, step out 45 feet approximately, hope it's good. We have to draw out our own exchange zones. And so it's always just a guess. Our shot put pits and our discus pit, there's there's no lines. Like in the discus pit, I don't know where I need the step to get my second spin in so I can actually throw that disc as far as it needs to go. Moss grows on it and I've slipped on it a few times. I think we had about 50 kids on our track team last year and one bathroom. Porta potties, Santa cans, honey buckets, whatever you want to call them, are brought in and they're set up for our fans and athletes to use during varsity contests like football and things. It's highly embarrassing to have to use plastic outhouses for our fans and our visiting fans and for our kids at practice. Um, a mom and a, with a toddler in one arm and a baby in the other is like, hey, do you guys have a bathroom? And I have to, you know, point to the, the porta potty and you can just see I mean, it's just deflated. Because there's so many of us, we run out of basic things like toilet paper, or hand sanitizer, and so we get there and we're just like, I can't do this, like that, we can't do that. Our grandstands, not only is it windy and cold, but with no real under wrapping or structure to protect the folks, the wind comes in, but also the rain. So what you have is, there's about a 20 by 30 area right in the middle of our grandstands where folks stay dry. They get wet, they're aluminum. Um, so I've seen people down the stairs before. Um, it, it just, there's so many benefits uh, to the whole project. We could benefit from charging admission. We have sort of course could sell concessions, but then if you think about it too, um, you know, people are gonna need to buy things like gasoline or, or cheeseburgers or whatever if they go downtown to Toledo and visit the grocery stores. You know, you're looking at bringing, you know, a couple thousand people into our small town for a Saturday afternoon. I'm a single sport athlete, so I've never felt what it's like to have a, a home meet for the sport that I do. Every other sport that we host gets to recognize their seniors in front of our, our community. Um, everyone except track. It's really sad, especially for like the seniors. This night where people are like, you earned this, this was for you, but, uh, but I don't get that. Bring a lot of new people to community who've never seen a track, like a track meet before, and the different events that come with it, and bring like a whole new awareness to these sport that we put all of our time into, all this training for us to become good at. The track is necessary. Bathrooms are necessary. Um, those are just things that um, every other school has, and our kids don't, and um, they deserve it. 